So, what's up guys? How do you do? Welcome to today's edition of Program Users TV. This is a continuation of our room live data course. In the previous class yesterday, we talked, of course, about we actually saw how to create our room database class as well as our DAO interface, data access object interface. Okay, so those are vital right there to the what you're going to cover today. So please, if you haven't checked them out, go check them. So in today's class, we're going to create our repository class. This is one of our very most important classes because this is how we're going to perform our business logic, okay? So remember, our aim is to develop an app that supports full CRUD operations, creating a record, reading the records, updating and deleting. That's our main purpose for this particular cause and we want to do it using the MVVM technique okay or design pattern model view view model and we want to make use of various architecture components which were introduced by Google in the year 2017 now those include for example the view model as well as room okay room which is our data access layer so that's what we're going to cover right here. Of course, the app that we're building is this one right here. So we can view data, we can view a single object, we can edit, okay? We can delete, we can add a new item, etc. So in today's class, basically, this is where we're going to actually write the logic for doing. Now, room in room, actually, it's recommended that when you are performing your CRUD operations or executing your queries, you do it in a background thread. That's what you're going to do. We're going to use the async task to execute our queries. This will ensure that our user interface will always remain responsive, okay? Everything will be delegated to the background thread. So let me show you an example. So suppose, for example, I want to add, I can just come right here, add a new scientist then i can choose the star right here and then i can come and choose the date of birth for the scientist i click add so the moment i click add insert successful okay what will happen is that of course we are going to be saving our data executing insert okay using room in the background thread to save our data such that if we go back to the list we are able to view all our data right there okay and even if you want to edit we can just come right here and edit it as you wish okay so you can just go ahead click update and that's it if we go back right there very very fast of course we have our data we can also delete okay so this is actually the main thing that we're going to of course this is very important because you can use this one to develop a full application so it's a good template that you guys can use okay we're going to do it in a modern way using the mvvm and today we're creating as i've said our repository class this repository class is going to is where we're going to perform our logic okay so yeah Let's get started. Okay, so it's now time for us to come and look at our repository class. Okay, so of course, under your data, we created three packages. The first was a model. The model was to contain our model class. In this case, it's only scientist. That class will be translated, of course, into a database table. Then, of course, the DAO right here was to contain our scientist DAO. Now DAO we said was this class which we could use of course to perform our CRUD operations basically. Okay, direct. It's actually the class which is going to be on top of our database table. Okay, directly the layer on top of it. It basically allows us to insert, select, update, delete. Okay, now repository is in this case is the class where we're actually going to implement our logic okay so create this class called repository scientist repository right here remember we're using the mvvm pattern so we're going to split things of course 
into concise classes as much as possible. This will make our app easier to maintain actually and also very easy to reason about and extend, okay? Even though we are creating a bunch of classes, don't really worry about these ones. It's worth it at the end of the day. So, in fact, this code we are writing right here, we're going to extend it in some of the future courses which I'm going to do, okay? It will be very easy to extend, you guys will see, and we're going to create some cool apps based on this one. So, start by creating this class called repository, and then let's start typing our code. So import android.content.context, import android.os.async task, import android.x.lifecycle.live data, import java.util.list, import java.util.concurrent.execution exception, import info.composure.room live data, then of course my room db, then import room live data data dot dao then of course we are also going to import our scientist class okay now public class scientist repository then private static scientist dao scientist dao then private final live data scientist live data what have we done well first we started by making our imports among our imports include our live data which we'll use of course to transfer our data and then of course this my room db which will represent our room database then the DAO which will be our crude class then of course the scientist which will represent our table okay or our data object then we've created the class we call it scientist repository then of course we've created this static field called scientist DAO which will hold for us our scientist DAO object. Then of course we've also created this live data right here. Now take note that the live data in this case will have this generic parameter of a list of scientists, okay? Meaning that the data which will be observed from it is going to be a list of scientists, okay? So yeah, this is, we are going to have this one. Then next let's go ahead and define our constructor. So public scientist repository context context then my room db database equal to my room db dot get instance then you pass the context then scientist DAO equal to database the scientist DAO then scientist live data equal to scientist DAO that select all then public live data of course list of scientist get live data return scientist live data. Now what have we done right here? Well, we've created this constructor for this particular class and we say that it's going to receive a context object. We we'll list that context object when constructing the instance of our MyRoomDB. What is MyRoomDB? Well, of course, it's the abstract class which we created that will represent our database. Now once we have our database, of course, we can obtain the scientist DAO. Remember DAO is our data access object. It's a class which you can use to access data. So we come and invoke it select all to access our data. What data will be returned for us? Well of course it's a list of a live data object okay. That live data we assign it to scientists live data and then when the user calls they get live data we're going to return that live data. That live data will allow us to listen to, of course, the changes in this particular list right here, okay? Basically to obtain our list of scientists. So this is it. This is how we're going to retrieve our data. Let's proceed. Class insert task extends async task, scientist void and long, then at override protected long do in background then scientist then scientists then return scientist DAO dot insert scientist then public long insert data scientist scientist then try then return new insert task dot execute scientist dot get 
then catch execution exception e then e dot print stack trace then we catch of course also interrupted exception e then e dot print stack trace then return null okay what have we done right here where well, we've created this in a class called insert task okay it's a class of course that is extending the async task you guys by this time you've already heard about async task of course it's a class which allows us to implement threading in a very easy manner no we implement threading when you want to do something in the background thread so that of course you don't uh, freeze your user interface okay so if you want to do some heavy task like inserting into a database it's recommended that you do it in a background thread okay so that it gets done in the background now of course you're passing three parameters to this zone as you can see a scientist object and then of course a void and then a long so in this case of course the scientist rated this is the parameters which you're going to pass into a doing background now doing background is a method you're overriding from this async task it's the method that allows us to perform our background stuff okay so whatever it is that you want to do in the background thread we have to do it inside this doing background now the other methods which you can override but this method of course these are must we have to override it as if we extend the async task okay because it's the exact it's the actual method which allow us to actually perform the threading now what are we receiving well a scientist param now what is a param a param of course as you can see you did you show it of course using these three dots right here this actually tells us that this is a param so it tells us that this of course it can act as an array think of it as an array that does not have a fixed size an array of scientists okay so instead of specifying the array right here we specify this param okay now with param we don't have to supply a fixed number of items if it was an array we'd have to specify of course a fixed number okay for example we had to if it is five five now with param you can specify an arbitrary number of scientists in this case so what you're going to do we're just going to pick the first one and then pass it to our insert okay now insert you are calling it from our scientist DAO object and that will insert for us into the database now let's come and implement this particular class remember we've just defined it it's not yet been implemented so this is the public method which will implement it it will return along right here now we can can see return new insert task dot execute we insert setting our insert task then you're invoking the execute what are we passing into it well a scientist object okay now that will of course execute it okay this will return for us along right here now we're going to catch our execution exception we'll also in catch the interrupted exception if those either of those ones occurs then you're going to return null okay so guys that's it that's the logic for inserting data into our async task let's move over to our other methods okay so class update task extends async task then we come at override then protected integer doing background then scientist scientists then return scientist dao dot update then scientist then of course public integer update then scientist scientist then try then return new update task dot execute dot get okay then we catch our execution exception we also catch our interrupted exception now if the any of those occurs we're going to return null okay so the same same thing which we've done we've we create a async task with the doing background then of course this update method will execute 
of course that async task right there okay let's move on to our next method so class delete task extends async task at override then protected integer doing background scientist scientists then return scientist down delete scientist public integer delete scientist scientist then try then return new delete task dot execute dot get catch execution exception then catch interrupted exception then return null if any of those occurs so yeah again we create our async task for deleting and then we of course in create our method for deleting the public method we will return an integer which is the number of rows that have been deleted class delete all task extends async task at override protected integer doing background return scientist dow dot delete all public integer delete all try return new delete all task dot execute dot get catch execution exception then print it out in the stack trace then catch interrupted exception and also print it out in the stack trace in that case return null and that's it that's the end of this particular class so guys we've created a class which can actually perform for us our CRUD operations this class we've called it repository okay it will work hand in hand with our DAO class to make sure that we're able to insert select update delete okay so that is it right here you can see in this class this is how we've implemented our logic the other one the DAO class was actually an interface actually it wasn't even a class it was an interface okay so this is it guys this is our repository class let's proceed to of course our next class